about three weeks ago, I did a video on my experience watching the Transformers the last night. And this is going to be a follow-up to that experience, but it is concerning a dream that I actually had on July the 16th that I feel as though is related to that experience and movie going, watching cinema, media in general. So you might want to go back and watch my Transformers um, video that I did. And because this is going to be a continuation on my realization in watching that movie that the magic is not something, you know, um, that is a lot of bells and whistles. The magic is actually the cinema, is actually the production that you are carrying into your real life. So you watch a movie and you either act like the characters you see, you perceive the world as the movie presents the world, you're in some way transformed by this, uh, this production. And preferably in ways that you don't know and can't control. Um, so this dream, now I was at a gas station across a large parking lot. This is the July 16th dream. There's a large parking lot, went to a gas station, and then crossed a large parking lot to go to the movie theater. Now, when I was at the cashier stand at the movie theater, they knew that I had been to the gas station because I, I used my card. And there, when you use cards, there is a history of your purchases that can be viewed. And I guess that showed maybe, you know, I'm connecting that to the movie going experience as well and that it is a way for you to be marketed to just like in the Transformer video show like the movies show advertisements to get you to in the form of like shirts that people wear in the form of phrases people say in order to get you to buy certain products, um, espouse certain viewpoints. But in this video, not this video, in this dream, I was shown that the cashier had a history of my purchases because the cashier knew I had been to the gas station because the history of my purchases are on my card. So the convenience of the card can work against you if advertisers are allowed to use that as your profile in order to market to you without your knowledge. So some of the conveniences that we have in modern time are actually um, ways to keep track of us in order to build a profile against uh, about us, in order to, without our knowledge, appeal to us um, for nefarious reasons, for nefarious um, end goals. So once I'm in the movie theater, um, I remember going to the concession stand and I was drinking like a large uh, cup of Coke Zero without any ice. Coke Zero is a marketed product that is marketed as, you know, a substitute for sugar, is a healthy substitute for sugar. But of course, you know, Coke Zero is bad for you, but it's marketed as something that's good for you. So that and that was something that I bought into um, earlier before I knew before I knew Christ. I was drinking Coke Zero because it was a way for me to consume junk food, but not consume junk food because I had been programmed to believe that because it didn't have any sugar in it, it was good for me. So I entered uh, the area where they're showing movies, and I can't say I entered the movie theater because actually this seemed like a sold out movie because there were chairs outside of the movie theater that were filled like the, the back doors to the theater were open and there were several rows like at least like eight rows or so outside of the movie theater so I'm thinking this is a sold out movie because even the chairs outside of the movie theater are all filled but I, I myself was just like walking around back they were facing the opposite direction towards the movie and I was like walking around um, outside of the movie theater where the chairs were, the overflow chairs were that were also filled. Now, this could mean different things. Like, okay, on the one hand, it means that the movie was sold out. But it could also mean that what people view in the movie theater spills out of the movie theater into their everyday life. So, um, they're watching this movie, and it is a movie about a weather event 
like a weather disaster. And I'm going to refer to my actual dream notebook because what happens is that if I have a dream and then I have another dream and then I have another dream or I have a dream several days ago, like there's a chance of false memories entering where you you recount the dream, but you've also, because you forgot some elements of it, you might have gotten mixed up with other elements of other dreams or other experiences. So I like to reference my dream book and so that I don't um, misremember anything. So now there's an overflow. And so I briefly look at what they're watching and they're watching, it's, it's a movie about like a weather disaster. So, um, So like it's it's a weather disaster and I'm seeing people that are like underwater and at times it's like I'm in I'm actually in the movie you know like it's it's like I rotate from being like my my viewpoint is sometimes in the movie and sometimes outside of the movie so again that to me is like a, a storm or something and everything is put underwater so that's to me that can mean the end of the world you know Noah's Noah's are the flood that destroyed the world, like the second time it being destroyed by fire. So it could be referencing that. Um, so there's a water storm, everything being put underwater. At times, a few times I'm actually in the movie and then I'm looking outside of the movie. So that could mean real life spilling into, uh, or the movie spilling into real life. Or it could mean that this, what they're watching is actually what's going to happen or what is happening at the moment. Now, um, that relates to the water could mean a flood and it could also mean the flood of the lies from the enemy drowning people and i'll get to that because that relates to the bible verse that from um revelation chapter 12. so after after the movie scene and it's you know it's a like a horror movie because there's this weather disaster, people are underwater, you know. The, but the movie is sold out. These people are clearly entertained. But on the right hand side, on the right side, remember this: the right side of the overflow. I'm like in a department store, so the lobby of the movie theater is like a department store, like a Kmart or something. And on the right hand wall are a bunch of white weed cutters hanging on the wall. And I thought that was bizarre because it's like, I've never in my life seen a white weed cutter, you know? And it's like, I don't know whether it's a battery powered or the electric, but I don't see any like cords or anything like that. So it's a cordless uh, weed cutter hanging on the wall on the right side. And I just thought that was bizarre. But. Um, I, I reference the Bible and turns out Matthew chapter 13 verse 28 to 30 NIV an enemy did this he replied the servants asked him do you want us to go and pull them up no he answered because while you are pulling the wheat you may uproot the wheat with them let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. And then, going down to uh, the 39th verse, but this is going back to the KG, KJV, and I used the NIV for the previous reading because I wanted to emphasize the use of the word weed rather than tares. So weed is another word for tear. Okay, so weed cutters, tares. All right, so the 39th verse is the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Okay, um, then verse 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Okay, so think about flood, think about weed cutter, tares, okay. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. All right, 
Now, getting to the white cutter, color of these weed cutters that were hanging up on the right side of the wall, um, outside on the overflow. And this could mean that these, these people have brought the movie, like, you know, the, the filthy media into their daily life. Or it could just mean that it's sold out. Like people are turning their backs on, on God and they're so immersed in the cinema, the cinema fiction, and it's warping their brains and making them useless spiritually to God, um, giving them the mark of the beast or whatever through the magic. Like they're overcome by the flood, you know, by the, the magic that is being, um, the, the curses that are being worked on them through their media consumption. Okay, Revelation chapter 19, verse 13 and 14. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Okay, so this gives me the, the biblical reference that the white weed cutters were the angels, the reapers, the harvesters, okay? but they are not at a movie theater for a good reason. You know, they're there to cut out the weeds, okay? So that, in my mind, gives me the impression that it is very dangerous if you consume the devil's magic, which is his cinema. Okay, the cinema I talked about in, in the mind control and the transformers, that is, the mag that is actually the magic. It's not a whole bunch of bells and whistles and you know, wands and fairies and all that, like the magic is the mind control through the media that you are consuming on a regular basis. That is what, um, that is what enters your, your mind and you take it out into your real world, into your reality, and you become it. So you have to be very careful about what you consume. Um, I, at one, at one point, I wanted to study, uh, hip-hop rap music for the elements of it that are corrupting that are subtly corrupting our people and so i caught myself listening going back because i don't listen to it now but going back and listening to some of the filthy like hip-hop songs that i used to listen to when i was outside of christ because i was i wanted to study them you know in order to figure out what exactly in these songs is is causing us to err you know this this polluting our spirits but instead i received like this horrible dream where the lyrics were being acted out by me and other people in the dream so it's like you can't consume like x r rated so lyrics to so r and x rated lyrics to songs r rated movies and not be affected by it like you're visualizing what you what you hear like if you hear sexual lyrics that's a curse on you you're visualizing what you hear if you see it, you're it, it's affecting you because you know if, if you're seeing pornographic uh, things being shown, like in R-rated movies, it's going to put you into a sexual mood, and it's something that's unavoidable. So it's like you have to really guard yourself. It's almost like okay, I'm going to try uh, heroin or I'm going to try crack this one time. Like you don't, you can't trust your fallen body, like your fallen nature. Your your beast nature to be able to combat the forces of evil. You have to separate yourself. The Bible says several times, you know, separate yourself from, from those that do wrong. You know, don't hang around with them. They will corrupt you. Um, so you, you, can't, you can't view the magic and not be affected by it. Um, so I, I'm glad that I did watch the Transformers on the on the second of July because it showed me, you know, the the magic that they're doing. It gave me an up to date like picture of what's going on. But at the same time, it also I also did feel a slight emotional response to the way people who look like me are, are portrayed. So it's like you are affected by what you consume. So it's best to consume that which is true and clean and that leads you to be become a better person. Anyway, um, after I left the movie theater, 
I'm in the backyard of my childhood home. So I'm referencing, I'm, I'm looking at my dream book now to make sure, I want to make sure that, because this happened, this dream was several days ago, so I don't want to make any mistakes in terms of remembering it correctly. Okay, now, what's his name? I'm trying to remember his name. Professor Snape, Severus Snape, uh, from Harry Potter, was, or a, a character that looked like him, um, had the, you know, white male, shoulder length, black hair, black outfit, wizard type, Severus Snape, that, that's who his profile, that's, that's who he looked like from a distance, but the face was that of like, I don't know, like it, just a devilish face. So he's like, he's saying things, but I can't hear anything that he's saying. He's muted, okay? And he's moving his arm around like, like a wizard, but I don't see like an actual wand. I just see him moving his, his hand around, and he's saying things. And like this, this sparkly water is, is issuing out from like his hand as he's waving his hand and saying stuff. But it's going around me. It's not touching me. The water that's coming out of his, his hand or whatever as he speaks, is not touching me. And he's just saying, like, I get the impression he's trying to show me, like, how powerful he is. And, um, yeah, like, that he's powerful and he's great and all this. And But I can't actually hear what he's saying, but he's trying to show me his immense power. But this water is not touching me. And I take that to mean that I'm not being affected by... Um, this water that, you know, because Revelation chapter 12, verse 15, the serpent cast out his, cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. To me, that makes it, you know, of course, literally, I never really took it literally, but I might have in terms of the flood, in terms of um, biblically linking it to the flood, the first destroying of the world, where the people were so corrupted and then the, all the flesh was destroyed. So I, I linked it to that, maybe. But in terms of literally, I really didn't understand it. But now I see it as being linked to the magic because water, flood. So what's happening is that the serpent is using the cinema, using media in order to speak because this uh, Professor Snake, Snape, who in Harry Potter is a wizard and, and is a fictional character. So again, that links it back to media, that it's connected to the media. He was saying, he was talking. So it's like, and, and the water in, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 15, and the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood. So the water is his speech, the curses through his speech, the brainwashing, the manipulation, the magic through his speech, through his cinema, through the scripts that he creates in order to mislead people so that they become weeds, you know, so that they become so that they have the mark of the beast and have to be destroyed so that they become um, taken away by the devil's lies but with all that he's doing all this you know he's trying to convince me with words how powerful he is so that again shows that it is a grand production it is a fiction but you know how many people watch Harry Potter and they get attached to like these characters you know and that's the point. You're supposed to get attacked. That's why people pay so much money to watch movies because they're actually affected by them. They, they see it as something that's actually, you know, important to their lives because they've been hypnotized. They've been tricked. So that a movie is more than just a movie. So it's like a drug for them. So this, this to me shows that First of all, that the devil is in the form of a man, meaning that the devil is working through men, okay? And 
the devil is a wizard, but his wizardry, his wizard activity is through what he speaks, the media that he produces, but, and it, it's in the form of um, a flood, you know, and it overtakes some people as it did in the movie theater, but so many people are addicted to that drug and, and the movie theater is sold out and it carries out to their regular life and they become weeds that have to be chopped down by the angels um, because they're contributing. They, they just become like bewitched and they offend the kingdom because they've polluted themselves with their consumption of this junk and therefore their offense to the kingdom of, of, of God. So, um, but I'm not, I'm not touched by this. I'm not touched by this, this magic. I'm not touched by the word. I don't even hear the words. I just know what he's trying to portray. He's trying to portray that he's powerful, but I don't actually hear what he is saying. So I just want you to be mindful of the fact, again, I emphasize because I received this dream two weeks after that video that I did on the Transformer and the same day that I watched that, I saw the black male wearing the same shirt that the black character in the movie wore, showing me again that what people watch is carrying out into their real world. They don't see it as fiction. They embody it. They uh, incorporate it into their lives and they are transformed by this filth that they're consuming. And that is the magic. The magic is the transformation that happens within you when you consume, regularly consume media filth. It mind controls you subtly and it turns you into an enemy of God. So be very, very careful what you consume. Try to consume only that which glorifies God or else you are at risk of becoming a weed that has to be plucked out. And again, we are, we are shown, and, and this is through cinema as well, we're shown that magic is something that is bells and whistles and, and you know, just something that you can see and something that is apparent, you know, the wizards wear witch caps and all that. But the magic is actually you. The magic happens within you. It's not something that you can see. It's not something that comes with bells and whistles. It's invisible, but it, transform you. it transforms you into something that is useless, that becomes useless and, and totally deceived. So think about that the next time you consider watching R-rated godless movies or the next time you think about being entertained by, you know, the devil's horror movies or sexual movies, you are subtly being transformed, whether it be to um, desensitize you to violence or to make you think more about sex um, or to make you think that you can be, you know, a wizard or a supernatural being or something like that within the devil's kingdom. So whenever you consume information like that, it is transforming you and it's very, very dangerous.